Hey all, Will Healy here, back in my home office. Uh, today I want to share with you an excellent blog I just read from the Automation Insights blog by uh, Mark Sippel. And the title of the blog is Five Steps to Make Troubleshooting Less Troublesome. I love the title, Mark. But uh, okay, here are the five steps. Are you ready? The five steps are, is it plugged in? Is the power switch on? Is it in run mode? Is the breaker fuse closed? And are any lights on? No, I'm just joking with you. I mean, but those are sometimes some of the things we're troubleshooting, right? But not what Mark shared with us. And I thought uh, what he shared was so good that I had to share it with you. So I like his point that so many things when broken are very basic and are typically hardware related. You won't find the solution in the logic lo ladder logic usually. So, um, you know, Occam's razor really applies. The simplest explanation is usually the best explanation. So Try not to overcomplicate things. But anyways, here are the five general steps to consider when troubleshooting in manufacturing and in general that, uh, that Mark shared with us in this blog. And the first one, of course, is identify the problem. And many of us, especially when I'm working with co-op students, uh, they tend to dive in and try to actually fix something right away instead of spending time to figure out what the problem is. So step one I love and I agree with, take the time to understand the problem. Um, sometimes what you observe is a simple symptom of the problem, not the problem itself, right? So don't start changing and fixing things in the first step. Sit and take time to understand the problem. Even in a high pressure situation, this will be better. Uh, the second step is establish a theory of probable cause. Start by considering the most obvious things first, whether it's a power supply or a sensor or a cable or a connector, or especially field detachables, um, and then work to the more complex things like networks or uh, ladder logic. So, you know, don't start examining the most complex things first until you've eliminated the most obvious ones. And make a list while you work. I thought this was really good advice. Make a list of the theories of probable causes is so you don't do anything twice or, or work over yourself. And so start that list of, of things that it could possibly be. Third, establish an action plan and execute the plan. So start testing probable cause theories to determine what it could be. Um, be careful not to get distracted by side issues that aren't, aren't related to the, to the breakdown. Write them down on your list so you can look at them later. Um, but I liked two good hints he had in this executing the action plan. First, try swapping hardware from a functioning place to see if you can um, um, duplicate the problem or if it's a piece of hardware or if it's something else. And then the second, if you do go in the code, the very first place you should go is the logs and see did someone recently change something in the code? So those are two really good hints when executing the plan. Step four. Step four is verify full system functionality. Once you've kind of fixed it, be sure to validate the system and make sure that it's functioning as it should and that you didn't break something when you were fixing something. And uh, if you skip this step, it could actually take the system offline again uh, even longer and, and maybe unresolved issues uh, got overlooked and that causes even more downtime. And then step five, we all skip step four five, but it's the most important one, and that's document the process. Document what you found and maybe and how you found it and and then come back on a, on a cyclic basis and look at it and say, hey, here's something that happens a lot. What can we do to make that better so it doesn't happen anymore? So I really liked these five steps because critical thinking like this helps eliminate wasted time. It dampens frustrations when we're in there trying to solve downtime. And most importantly, it helps us reduce that unplanned downtime that drives us all crazy. Okay. I hope you're having a great week and thanks for that blog, Mark. Have a great day, everybody.